Mississippi State. We merely have the resolution of Splash 7 here. It is nothing for you to do but to familiarize yourself with it and use it as a guideline as you consider future Splash. <clears throat> that would be forthcoming. Um, and with that said, that pretty well completes the agenda for what we had. We're down to the goals and uh, and, uh, finalizing your vision comments. So we left off the water and sewer yesterday. We still had um, KLVB, the Animal Shelter, and the Regional Welcome Center approach to the historic courthouse on our list from yesterday. If there's any of that, anybody wants to look at or talk about. You mentioned the courthouse, but you said the courthouse? The Regional Welcome Center. I like the idea of uh, putting the, maybe the Downtown Development Authority offices and the um, tourism offices in there. I think that's something we work towards in my opinion. Uh, and I agree. And what that will still allow would, will allow Lowndes County really to have control over the courthouse and how the facility can be used. The campus around that square, that whole entire square, uh, it can still be utilized for events like farm days, uh, additional um, center points in the community and functions that may be done um, around them. And there's a lot of events that, that brown bag days uh, that's done. All of those sort of events still can be, could be, would be, and should be done there on the courthouse court. I agree. And I think it also, I think you also need to utilize, let the years of authority utilize it as an event space after hours. Yes, right. Yep. You know, they can sure run out the court, they run out the run out the um, the courtroom to whoever wants a, a speaking engagement or whatever. Or speaking engagement. Weddings or whatever they want to do. Absolutely. Whatever event might be used, uh, it, it that could be utilized and I think that we could serve the purpose of what the preservation committee uh, their intent and what they want to try to accomplish at least from the standpoint of that courtroom itself, we will be able to preserve that and be able to continue to utilize if we ever need to yes. use it as a courtroom. We'll have if we need to use it for a courtroom, then it's there and, and uh, to be utilized. So the DBA, Main Street, Tourism, those are the three uses that we're talking about? That's the three basic uses that we probably would start with. Are there other some other uses that might be developed and might have an interest? That could be. That's still in Is Main Street Main Street's so not a not a department within within the city, and 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 there's two staff members for Main Street right now, Ellen and her assistant, and then in the DDA, do they currently have an office? Do they? I'm not sure that they space. have an office. I think there's some overlap with that staff and those um, those board members. So I mean, I think that that could. So what about tourism? Could be addressed. Um, we mm -hmm. have, how many staff members are with that? One. Just one. There is a staff position one, yeah. that is currently funded at the Rainwater Conference. But it's full time, and there's somebody there pretty much. They're supposed to be. It's basically full time. I don't think it's 40 hours. It's full of time, but you know, once we put in for an assistant, then they never could get that person on board. So there's still money in the budget to look at that. So are there any, just thinking wildly and outside the box, I mean, are there any concerns with having, I mean, I think like Ellen, for instance, one person on any given day being inside that building by themselves any security concerns or anything like that that we should think through? I'm not trying to poke holes in it, but I'm just thinking, you know, right now all those offices are kind of held co-mingling, co-existing with others, and we're going to put 
we one have, or two women in that building by the door, <coughs> totally by themselves. We have the security, the same security monitoring that happens downstairs in our building also covers that area, which I know is still across the parking lot, across the street. But there's, but there's been some preliminary conversations along and along, some information that has come to us secondhand through other tourism representatives um, that indicate that um, some of the folks that you all have mentioned would be thrilled to go into that facility and there weren't any caveats or concerns that came along with that. I, I do want, and this is just something I've had in the back of my mind and y'all might become, if I'm crazy, I'm crazy, which I am. <laughs> um, it's I, better to be crazy. Is there a difference? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I've always kind of had a thought that the courthouse would be a good location for us to have our military retreating offices located as well at, at the courthouse. Now, I don't know what those agreements are. I know currently they either they're li they lease space. They used to be, I know years ago, they were in the federal building over there on the first floor of the federal building. Then they moved out to some storefront space at one point over at Castle Park. Right now, I don't really, if they're kind of, I don't know where they're at. But I, I don't know that there would be room for them, just based on what we've heard Chad talk about and, and looking at the public okay. defender and some of those, I don't think that there would be room for that function as well as these functions. Well, and that's what, that you know, and, and, and I'm going to back up one half step to clear something up. Yesterday, the recommendation came up for Mr. Pritchard that Scotty and I participate with the architects uh, and with Chad on the development of the historic courthouse. To clear that up, is that the commission or is yeah, anybody comfortable with doing team. that? Yeah, if y'all don't want me doing that, just tell me. Now. Well, well, I'm, I'm not sure if it's been behind the I, scenes. Yeah, I mean, go. I'm serious. I'd like to, I'm like. i not really sure that we had a consensus there to do that. If we have a consensus, then fine. That's part of what we need to do here. Yeah. That, that is established that that we, we will move forward then. I think with your background, and your background, y'all are about two of the most qualified to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's put Chad in there. Yeah. Oh, he's a given. I can't yeah. 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 Nobody yeah. steps yeah. off without. Y'all yeah. do understand what I was requesting. Will you tell us so that we're sure that we yeah, put our job to yeah, I, I don't want to get we'll into that like I got into this one. So we'll, we'll, you know. we'll put the RFP together. Y'all review it with Chad. And then the actual RFP responses and the architects, you evaluate them and recommend to the full board. You give us direction there. That, that's it's as simple as that, right, Joe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's simple. Go ahead. Yeah, that's just remember, no, these are the architects you're going to be working with. I, I know. Listen, <laughs> I, I, I have been there and done that, and I know exactly what you're saying. But, but here, but he has too. So. Okay, but, but and let, let's stop right there, and, and I get that. But the biggest issue here, it doesn't matter who it is and who is selected as the architect, at some point in time, we're going to have to finalize who is going to utilize that facility. I mean, that's been part of the issue all along. So that we can give, or Chad, or somebody can give direction to the architect as far as how is it going to be laid out. If you look at what you current, what I currently recommended, you've got four corners of that. Okay. Of the courthouse, you've got probation on when you walk through. Probate the, court. Probate court. Correct. All the way. Then you have across the hall state court in the very middle of the uh, lobby. That would be those um, uh, that area would be opened up as it was when it was the tax commission. That would be expected to be for tourism. Mm -mm. Then you've got the north uh, east corner, which was at one time 
sheriff, and then it became part of magistrate, and then the main part of magistrate was in the south. East. So with those being the office areas, I think it would be fairly reasonable to expect that it's just going to be basic offices. There's nothing special about the design or the use of that. Once that first floor uh, or basement area is fixed, then the rest of that is going to be just office here. Well, if you do a regional welcome center, that's that main area. you got to have some room for brochures and display stuff. Okay. Yeah, okay. there's plenty of room. So then the point was just that that's just based on this uses, then there's no room for the other uses. Right. Got it. No problem. Because no you problem. also have to hang on to the historic preservation part of it because it's on the National Registry, mm -hmm. so there's not a lot of wiggle there. Mm -hmm. Also, keeping in mind everything that's required related to ADA access. So with some challenges, we can get that up to code as far as that, that floor where the four offices are and maybe the basement as far as the restrooms go. But and, and the second floor to the courtroom. But whenever you start talking about the one above there, where the judge's office is and that kind well, of I don't stuff, want to go there. yeah, you're not going to get. Yeah, I, I get think when I, I think to be honest with you, if we get above that first floor, we're going to we're already going to be in a huge number from a budgetary standpoint of what we can actually get accomplished. So, you know, no, I, I don't think we need to go above so, that. So. If, if what we're looking at is utilizing current offices and spaces there, then absolutely that's, that's the way we need to do it right there. If we were going to look at totally remodeling those current corners and offices, then you could probably find a way to work in some, something else as well. So that's where I'm at. Fine. Go with that. Okay, so the animal shelter. Do you all want to talk about no, I think we need to. I think we got to. I think it's a big issue that we've got, uh, and we're going to have to kind of make a decision uh, about how we want to go. And I think funding right now is at the point we've got in the current splash, was it 800000 Which is going to actually be six fifty. How about that? Six fifty. About six fifty. Well, based on the information that we know, and I, if I got it right, I mean, part of the recommendation is carry that 650 over and push the actual animal shelter as we feel like we would really, I mean, just a whole new facility into some additional requests in SPLOS 8. Or do we take the 650 and do phase 1 and then ask for phase 2 in SPLOS 8? I would ask that you consider using the 650 to build the uh, facility for housing of the animals, leave the staff in their current uh, office area, and then in your next splice, put your office area, your addition, that, that addition onto the front, or whatever way it's designed, but probably on the front. And I would rather Consider spending the money on the animals first. Can we do? Can we build the animal containment area for safety? Well, we think. <coughs> we think. But I, we're. Well, no, and I'm sorry. I, I'll pop it. Yeah, I mean, but, but if, if we do it that way, I think an important aspect of what we're trying to accomplish, rather than keep pushing things off, but we're talking about. Splice eight in twenty twenty and after, yeah. then can we? Or is it feasible that between now and really twenty twenty one twenty two, uh, before we could actually do something? Is it feasible to take the current facility like you're talking about, continue to use that for administrative, patch it up, doctor it up? whatever we can to temporarily use it for administrative, build a new animal facility next to it, behind it, however that, how it works out. 
but then utilize the exert the existing facility as well for an adoption area so that you have a separation between the animals that you actually are housing and caring for and doing that to where you've got an area that the citizens can come into the administrative side of it. Here is the animals that's for adoption today. You know, it wouldn't take a year to big an area. And then at the end of the day, you can always move those animals back out to where their normal area is. I think Chad's going to recommend to you based on his comments yesterday in his discussion with me that because of those walls being load-bearing and they're deteriorating, uh, you're not going to be able to utilize that space for a very long period of time. And the foundation is already sinking, so the whole, the full recommendation is once you get the facility built that you won't go in there and tear what's left down and remove the slab. I agree, and, I, and that was my concern too. Because of all, I mean, you, I don't think you can go in there and patch what's there because it is all structural. All that Hubble Hubble block was, you know, it's bearing the weight of everything above it. So, and, and that and then attic area was actually uh, some of it was, uh, I, was finished, the, I was there when you did. finished out. I'm mean, not finished, but it was laid out for offices. Up there. Which is totally not. Uh, I, mean, I don't know what from they were the thinking. That, that's what they had. Well, the other issue too is for the existing area. As long as you've got animals in there, and that floor has got to be clean because of the design underneath that floor, and because of the wrong type of traps and stuff that were put in for that water. The only way to clean the shelter is to flood it. They flood it every day, that's sometimes why all the, twice all the a metal day. Frames and all and that's some why of the deterioration of that block is because it's being. And it was never sealed properly. Okay. I, I, I'm just I'm trying. I'm just, trying, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. there because I would say, Scotty, you correct me, you and Bill, if you were talking about, you know, we had initially eight hundred thousand. You're probably going to be close to a million dollars to do maybe a little over. Some of the ones that, that I've looked been, at yeah. okay. that Millions. were really nice were, oh, were two million dollars. I mean, yeah. they were they were. You know, I'm not saying they were top of the line, state of the art house, 100 plus animals. But I but I would think that for half of that we could build something that's that's adaptable to the fact that you know you could go on and, and, and extend the the rear of it for additional animals down the road. How, how much support will you get? from the uh, animal support community. They're ready. They're ready. Yeah. If you say, you know, we don't have enough money, so what we're going to do is set type of what we got, and we'll put it on the next plus. I have already heard from them that they would rather see that happen than either something that is um, not really what we need be built or money be be put on to that existing facility that they all know that's falling apart. I I mean I, my recommendation if anyone asked and not to overload Commissioner Ornstein would would but would be for um, maybe me and Chad to gather some more information on this and come back to you all with That'd some be better happy. detail because I think I know they've already talked some, and there's some of those facilities that you've looked at already and talked to the architects that have been recently built. And I think that Chad's got some of the Department of Ag information that you weren't as familiar with that you probably need because it's really hard to get right on a price. It's not, there's some extra you wouldn't think that's in there because of, of what the Department of Ag and USDA requires. Yeah, there's a firm in Georgia that specializes. That. And they already have probably 11 or 12 designs that range from a million to seven million. That they're basically saying, you know, we're not going to give you these drawings, but we've already invented that wheel, and there is some cost savings by. Well, and you know, the budget was, numbers are already assigned to those too. You know. Maybe I didn't explain myself very well, but that brings it back to this question. 
if we're going to look at the fact that we don't have enough money now, $650,000 to build a new facility, then do we need to take some of that and at least do some, I'm not talking about expensive, pat but do some patching to the existing building because we're going to be there for four or five more years he's, if we're going to build a whole new facility. He's patched it. Chad spent what did they spend? We had a little money in a, in a previous loss that um, when we thought that we were going to be able to remodel the existing before the report came back from the architect that this is just falling apart, mm -hmm. um, to go in and repaint and do some of those things, there's requirements as far as the animals not being able to be in that space for 24 hours and stuff. So mm -hmm. there's some storage area outside that was um, improved so that it could be used from, for some temporary storage if we had to do that during the day. Um, there's a couple places where the block could crack all the way through the wall that they've gone in and sealed that. Um, they repaired some of and replaced some of the sink facilities and some minor plumbing stuff. So there's some of that to, to get it as, as good as you could before you all made a decision on what you really wanted to do with that larger part of the money that he's already done. All right, so then, again, am I, am I understanding Mr. Pritchard floated the idea of building, going ahead and doing the area to house the pets, the animals. Just go ahead and do that. And then when funding is available, which would be the next floss, if, if we can get the next floss and get the funding there then to finish that construction and do an addition, for example, out on the front end. That's one solution. But what I'm hearing is, is that you think that the citizens that are involved in animal welfare in this community, they just want to see a new facility totally. They don't want to see a phase one, phase two. No, I, I think and Paige, correct me if I'm wrong. I think what I've what I've heard is that don't spend a lot of money trying to fix up what's there. That was that was first. Don't don't go in there and patch it up. It's not worth saving. Number two is if you're gonna spend money building something new, make it part of a ma of, of a master plan. When we when we built the jail, the ancillary or support area for. Uh, the intake as well as the kitchen and the laundry could be expanded by moving two walls. That was the way it was designed for the future. If you look at this and this facility and you build that initial housing area for the animals that can be added to along with the office space and expanded for more, uh, I mean, for support for office space as well as additional animal space if needed. Then, once you have addressed the need currently as well as in the future. Yeah, I think that, I think, I mean, I think you're, you're right. I think that what, I don't think there's a problem in phasing it. But I think that people are looking for that master plan approach because there is a lot that is wrong with the current shelter beyond the fact that there's substandard building materials as far as the flow of the building and the, the cleaning resources and where those sinks need to be and where the offices need to be and the actual room for adoption space. All of those come into those plans that you're talking about and that's part of what Target Zero talks about a part of what the staff has talked about. So as long as we're not trying to put the back end of a Cadillac on the front end of a Ford pickup truck, then we're okay. I think that that's my biggest fear well, is that we just build yeah. housing area and no. and, and that's what I was trying to get to is that what do we charge the architect with doing? Now, we, we charge the architect in coming up with an overall plan, this is what we want for an animal shelter in Lowndes County. Then realizing that it's going to have to be done in phase one, phase two, then they would design that building based on phase one, phase two. God, I mean, you look at job projects all the time that the plans show 
a phase one, phase two project to it. So if that's the direction that we want to go in the animal shelter, then I think that's what we need to state here is that, you know, it, it would, it would, we, need to, we need to give administration uh, the direction to move forward with a new animal shelter to meet the needs for animal welfare in Lowndes County for now and sometime into the future. And by doing that, we need it, that design to be done in a phase one, phase two process so that we can best utilize the funding that we have today and funding in the future. All right. What, don't shoot me, what if we borrowed half a million dollars to do the whole thing now? It costs us on a 10 year and it costs us about $6,000 a year to pay it off in 10 years. Could the next, could the next loss be utilized to pay off that debt? I think you can utilize block. You have to, it has to be worded that you're using that for debt reduction. Or, if you look, depending on whatever else comes along in the next FLOST, you can um, consider uh, doing a bond to go ahead and build those things and then that money is used to pay the uh, yeah, bond. Yeah. Same way. I mean, so whether you loan it or you a bond, but that may be a better idea than doing a phase one, phase two. Okay. What's the consensus on? A scenario of going ahead and obtaining the funding through whatever the resource is that we that we determine that is, and going ahead and building the animal shelter that we need, that we feel like that we need here in Lounge County. Yeah, that's what I thought. I have no objection to that whatsoever. The banker over here might be cringing to try to figure out how he can make that work. But realistically, again, if we have a need rather than ending up in a situation, because here's reality. We're talking about funding in Splash 18 that may or may not happen. Well, like I said, if you did a 10 year animal, half a million dollars, depending on the rate, you're probably looking at somewhere around six thousand dollars a year. So, you know, we can that makes for better budgeting sense as far as I'm concerned. But that's me as a businessman looking at it. If I've got to make a major investment in my business, I had I had rather know what I need to go out and borrow that money and then what I have to have to service that makes it a lot easier for me to budget it and makes more sense for me to do it. Now that's doesn't always fix for local government, but that's where Joe and I put on head sometimes. Well we've got a situation right now, I think we've got an animal shelter that needs to be replaced. That's we right. all agree. I think there's a the consensus or a unanimous whatever, unanimous consensus that we need a new shelter. We've got six hundred thousand dollars in sports money that we can use right now. I'd say we either like I said borrow or get bonds or whatever we need to do to go ahead and build a shelter like it needs to be built now. Be done with it, and then pay it off over a 10-year period. Or if we get SWAS passed on the SWAS eight passed, then we can use that to reduce the debt we have on it. I, I'm all in favor and would support that. Mark, suits me. So there you go. Just for my education purpose. I'm white over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> deal with those folks who are passionate about this who say the, the Humane Society folks and, the, and those those people who would want to contribute. Is, is there any room for any of that? I mean, say hypothetically that you could, that through that community, you could raise a million dollars to go towards this. That's how it's, you got in the boat you're in now. I don't you, think you, you, right. Right. you don't get money out there's constraints attached. I don't think you want to go down that path. Okay. This, this, either need, this either needs to be our current Lowndes County model or it needs to be the Thomasville model. Gotcha. I agree. I can't, just, it's I just, difficult to have both. 
But I, I do think that, and I can talk to Carol, <clears throat> I do think that there may be some grant funds available, maybe not for the brick and mortar part of the project, but, but for maybe the pens that go in the cat room and things like that, there are grants out there for those things. So it may be some of that resource that we can find out. Okay. Because okay. grants. <laughs> so we move on. We know what we're going to do with the animal shelter. We've given them direction. 